You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. you're always on the go but never seem to get anywhere welcome to eft for spiritual fitness with your host katherine taylor best-selling author katherine taylor will tap your way from energetic overload to a relaxing state of spiritual fitness so now please welcome the mother of inner child work and the host of eft for spiritual fitness katherine taylor Greetings again. I'm Katherine Taylor, broadcasting live from the Twin Cities in Minnesota on Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And as you just heard, this is EFT for Spiritual Fitness. So first of all, I just want to talk a little bit about what EFT is. EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. It was developed by uh, Gary Craig over 20 years ago. It's pretty, it's pretty well known now throughout the world, actually. And part of that is because it's one of the most effective energy therapies that really enable you to begin to manage your reactivity to life with a simple, self-administered form of acupressure. It's very user-friendly, and it's a procedure that once you learn it, you can incorporate it into your own daily living to take the edge off, as well as doing major healings. So you'll hear me talk a lot about EFT, as well as TRE. Now, TRE stands for Tensions and Trauma Releasing Exercises, developed by David, Dr. David Berselli. And I just recently got certified in TRE as well. That's a little harder to talk about and to demonstrate. With EFT, I can actually do some EFT exercises with you. TRE is a process by which you go through a series of seven exercises that invite your body to build this charge, which then enables it to discharge all of those contractions that you have held in your body from a very young age right up to current moments where you go into that fight or flight response and you activate the stress response. Well, if that fight or flight response is not discharged, if you can't flee and you can't fight back, your body freezes. And what happens is that contraction gets locked into your body. So TRE is a method by which that contraction can be released. It's a beautiful, beautiful combination with EFT because EFT is very targeted, whereas TRE is pretty nonverbal. You may or may not know what is being released, but your body knows. And in its innate wisdom, it knows how to release once you give it permission. So both of these are energy therapies that are main ingredients in really becoming coming in attaining and sustaining what I call being spiritually fit. So what's spiritual fitness? Well, simply put, it's just a commitment to establishing habits and protocols that enable you to live holistically, body, mind, heart, and soul. Spiritual fitness is really having an antidote for what's become the major addiction of this century, which is the addiction to stress. The latest research really suggests that as a planet, we are universally suffering from what has now become the global post-traumatic stress disorder. Now think of that. We have a whole planet that is in this constant state of reactivity. We're over-informed, we're over-stimulated, we're over-amped, And we experience what's called cognitive gridlock. Now, simply put, what that means is that the input that we're receiving every day has outshined our brain's ability to process it. 
So we're gridlocked. We can't move forward. And that's experiencing all of that stress that's bubbling up that we're trying to learn how to manage. Will you add that to this time of year, the holiday season, where that's over the, the top? And you're going to be looking for ways to manage that. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Because as I just said, there's no other time of the year than this holiday season when that stress and those triggers are more apparent. And it's universal. So how do you manage that when you're already experiencing an internal stress and environmentally and even globally, you're being triggered by just the energy of the stress on the planet? Well, you experience chaos. And when you experience chaos inside and out, you try to get away from it. And a lot of us during this time of the year get away from it by acting out with excessive behaviors. You try to manage it. You try to discharge the energy. But you know what? There's always a price to that. There's a cause and effect. There's consequences. So today we're going to talk about what those triggers are. We're going to talk about how to tame those triggers and that chaos that trigger the fear, the fear of being out of control, the consequences of being out of control. That's what we're going to really dive into today. And to add to this conversation, I've invited my friend and colleague, Nancy Cayley, to join me. Now, some of you may remember Nancy from last month. She joined me in a in an episode last month, and we just talked about addictions. Like me, Nancy is an addiction specialist. She is the director and facilitator of the CORE Retreat, and that's spelled C-O-R, Retreat. It's a food and recovery program located right here in the Twin Cities in YZ, Minnesota. CORE T- teaches a way to live from obsession with food and the excess weight it causes. In fact, Nancy and I are both alumni of the program. So much of what we're going to be talking about today is not only what we both respectively learn from CORE, but also the tools that Nancy and I have both gathered throughout our over 50 collective years of working in the field of excessive behaviors. So without further ado, I would like to welcome my friend and colleague, Nancy Cayley. Nancy, are you there? I am. Good morning, Catherine. It's nice to be here. Good good morning. Well, welcome back. And welcome back to this topic that we are both really so passionate about and so versed Mm -hmm. in from our own experience and our professional experience. So let's let's jump in. Let's jump into the emotional triggers, because before we can really give people tools on how to deal with with all of this being over triggered, we've got to kind of identify what those triggers are. So when we talk about emotional figures, we're really talking about the stuff that comes up in relationship to family, in relationship to relationships. We have so many more expectations. We often have a lot more contact with our families. So what have you witnessed with that, both in your own life and in working with others, Nance, about this time of year with relationships and family obligations and the stress that comes along with both of those? Well, I, I think and I experience for myself and I know with the people that I work with during the holidays, um, there are so many expectations, not all of them negative. I mean, I think when we think about emotional triggers, we might, for me, I might only assume that that has to do with negative emotional triggers. I think it can it can be both. I think it can be the mm-hmm. positive expectation of what I want to experience with my family coming from past, coming from from what I want to, I want it to be a, a, a meaningful time. I think for many of us, the holidays, there's certain, we, the, kind of the holiday spirit. If you get into, mm-hmm. you know, we call it the Christmas spirit. And it can mm-hmm. come with just that heightened sense of expectation and joy or love or, um, and, and I don't know that family is signed on. You know, my family mm-hmm. members haven't necessarily signed on with me. My adult sons haven't necessarily signed on with me <laughs> mm-hmm. um, to experience it the same way, or they don't even know what I'm experiencing emotionally because I don't think that we all just lay it out there, but it mm-hmm. certainly builds within us, which mm-hmm. for me it says trigger mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. me, that says trigger in any way to, to experience the world or something and, and possibly be disappointed or overstimulated. 
right certainly right. overstimulated even just going out into the community with food for me with my particular daily one that i really work on is my food addiction and and just going out in the community there's triggers everywhere. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I was saying in the intro is that at this time of year, it's like it really commingles and you can't get away with, you know, from it. And I agree. I think mm-hmm. even even the trigger of of having a lot of joy puts us over the edge a little bit because we don't know how to manage it. It's it's excessive energy, even if it's positive. But I think the other thing that comes up a lot for people Um, are all the regrets and the resentments and the losses. Grief can be really, really prevalent during this time of year. If you've experienced a a recent loss or you have, you know, a change in your status over the last year and that impacts how you can show up, it's like all of those situations, those life events that have happened either in this last year or or during this season, like a lot of times people will lose people during this season, and then every year that's an anniversary, you know, so that comes up. Yes. Um, and yes, then- my sons experience that in their family right now. And, and I have a son who has gone through significant changes, and that's a grief and a loss in terms of exactly. what we expect and, and what is. And so exactly. any change or loss or shift is is apparent within the family system. We just experienced that at Thanksgiving, my family, and you could feel it. I could feel it maybe because I'm sensitive and, and process through this stuff, but certainly I could tell that other members were feeling that stress. Right, right. Well, as I've talked about on these episodes, we just had the death of my brother. And so this will be that first holiday season without him and I remember that with mom Mm -hmm. it's like that first year you just go through you know the the first Christmas the first Thanksgiving the first New Year's the first Mm -hmm. birthday you know all of those firsts so if you're going through those you're going to have to have some tools on how to manage that and not only is it the current triggers but this can also bring up that inner child and that fantasy and the the hope that we're going to get to to have a do-over. We come into it hoping that this year will be different. And sometimes it is. Sometimes in our own Mm -hmm. families, we've been able to create the traditions that kind of override what we did or did not experience. Either that or we haven't been able to manifest the same traditions. We haven't been able to carry that in. So there's a loss to that. And then also just those social obligations, of having to show up for one more party or, you know, buy one more gift that you really don't want to buy. In fact, in in a couple of weeks, I'm going to do a whole show on just really uh, changing obligations into opportunities. So I'll be talking a lot more about that. But, But all of that is wrapped into creating this anticipation and this edginess. And so what we do is we feel more chaotic. And when we feel more chaotic, it's a lot easier to excessively spend, to excessively eat, to excessively uh, drink, to excessively overbook ourselves. Do you notice that with mm-hmm. some of your clients that they get so backed into obligations that it becomes a drudgery instead of something that they're looking forward to and then they don't know how to manage that? Oh, I think there's so many I have tos, I have tos, I need I should um so many obligations with with the gift giving and presents and and uh entertaining and what do I have to you know for any of the moms that I work with 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 children and and you have to get them the right gifts and Mm -hmm. and and it loses its sense of joy or its sense of 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 what the Christmas the holiday is about in fact last month my newsletter focused on kind of what what is the where is the joy that we find in relationships during the holidays is it in the stuff is it in the food is it in the drink or the Or is it in our relationships and the quality of what we can bring to them? And we lose that. I notice that very much with the people Mm -hmm. around me with stress about holidays Mm -hmm. Um, and definitely with the people I work with who are trying to to survive. But we're talking about thriving today, about how we get through this and maintain some vibration of joy. Right, right. And stay centered. One of the things I started with Mm -hmm. my nieces and nephews really over 20 years ago is instead of giving them presents, 
I started giving them activities like going to a play or a concert or something that was a shared experience. So when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about some tools that we can use. But we have to take a short break. Again, I'm Catherine Taylor, here with my friend and colleague, Nancy Cayley, the director and facilitator of the CORE Retreat, a food recovery program located in Wyzetta, Minnesota. And you're listening to EFT for Spiritual Fitness. We're broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we will be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back to EFT for Spiritual Fitness, broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm your host, Catherine Taylor, and today I'm with my friend and colleague, Nancy Cayley, director and facilitator of The Core Retreat, which is a food recovery program located in Wyzetta, Minnesota. And before we took the break, we were discussing the triggers that can happen during this holiday season and how our stress can go off the charts and how you might slip and slide during the season. And what we're really trying to do is inspire you to be able to thrive during this holiday season instead of just just surviving it, how you can really thrive. And part of that requires that you learn how to stay connected to yourself, how you learn to develop what's called conscious contact with one other person with yourself and with your higher self. And so we have a series of different tools that we're going to talk about. The use of journaling and self-help groups and check-in groups and having an accountability buddy and developing a food plan and an exercise plan and setting a budget for how you're going to spend during this time and really developing mindfulness techniques. So I want to invite you, Nance, to just kind of talk about, let's go with the first one of journaling and how you've witnessed journaling is a tool that can keep you in touch and how you use it in your work with others. Well, I know in my work with, with, with other people struggling to find peace and abstinence and, and the joy, well, just, just to find that peace. Journaling is vitally important. Um, the people I, I assign it across the board to, to everybody to do some sort of writing and, and physical check-in that way where they're getting that energy out or getting some thoughts down on paper. The, the, the folks that I work with that do it, 100% report that it's a positive experience, mm-hmm. that it provides them some therapeutic value in terms of a daily task that they can accomplish and that teaches them something, teaches them something mm-hmm. and, and helps settle in to their skin in terms of what their commitment is. And mm-hmm. so for this holiday mm-hmm. season, I think journaling on a daily basis 
would provide a sense of this is my daily goal. It's a way to talk about a daily goal. It's a way to to check in with yourself, with your higher power about how am I doing. Right. And I would have to say that hands down, anybody that does it reports, this is a positive experience. This is good for me. Absolutely. One of the nice things about journaling and using your hand, it, it's even more effective if you handwrite it, I think. Now, that might be old school, mm-hmm. but there's something about having a pen and paper and what you put on paper, you get out of your body. And the, yep. the you know element that holds our stress is our body. So the more we can do to let our body off the hook, the better. And it's really having a conversation with yourself and a way to stay present and a way to connect with your higher self, like you said. But you can also use journaling if these feelings do come up, regrets and losses. You can use your journal to write letters to those people making amends and you can make them in the unseen. Let's say you have an amends to make with someone who's already crossed over. You write them a letter and you read it to their higher self. So journaling and writing can be a very effective tool. You talked about self-help groups and check-in groups. And those kinds of groups are a place where we can go and break the isolation. So how have you seen that work, Nance, with especially the population that you work with, which so many people are in recovery and self-help groups? And I know that a lot of of, uh, places you know, over schedule those groups. So people really have that access. How do you see that fitting into an overall strategy for staying in connection with self and, and really thriving instead of just surviving? Well, I think it's vital. I, I really do. Most of the work that I do and have always done is, is my, this one of the strong suggestions is to have some sort of check-in group. I work with 12 step recovery groups, primarily in terms of where I refer to. And even in my own personal experience, I just, I have a weekly group that met on Tuesday night. And at the end of it, every one of us agreed that we felt better. We laughed. You know, when we first sat down at the table in a circle, I think it felt serious. Um, You know, it's cold, it's dark, it's a Tuesday night. And, uh, and by the end of it, we were all, we had all laughed and joked around. We had done a journaling exercise together where we all, in handwriting, I chuckle when you say it needs to be handwritten. I'm old school, so I always assume that we're handwriting <laughs> if we're journaling. I shouldn't assume that, but I do. Um, I do think that's the most helpful way. But we literally sat down in a circle that night. If you have, number one, get to a 12-step support group if there's one in your area for for whatever type of recovery you're working on. And, 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 and again, not just because of a struggle, but because there you're going to thrive. There mm-hmm. was laughter at that table, and that laughter was was he, not only healing from whatever we might have been struggling with when we sat down, but it's uplifting in what we then bring out to the world. That mm-hmm. vibration then carries forward to our family, to our workplace, to our home, to our pets. You know, some of mm-hmm. the people are going mm-hmm. home to a dog, and they're bringing that joy home to their dog. Right? And isn't mm-hmm. that what we want? Not mm-hmm. only every day, but but in our in this holiday season, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when we're Absolutely. wanting that Christmas spirit. When I think about that Christmas spirit, I think about when I was a little girl, and I would just feel this overwhelming kind of sense of joy and wonder mm-hmm. about what was going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. And that's not a bad way to live. Kind of waiting mm-hmm. for that next, expecting something great. Right, right. And I think that's mm-hmm. what it can provide. And and we only get that. I can most of the time only get that in connection with other human beings. Mm-hmm. I certainly mm-hmm. find lots of lots of good stuff at home, meditating and prayer and meditation on my own with my higher power. But boy, oh boy, do I really feel it when I connect with others. Yeah. Now, see, I'm just the opposite. It's interesting because when I did the uh, Myers-Briggs, it's like I was definitely more of an (laughs) introvert. And an introvert goes to these parties. And because I'm such an empath, whatever somebody is not dealing with, I'm like this cosmic vacuum cleaner Mm -hmm. that just picks it up. Mm -hmm. So I go away from, from social events like that just exhausted. And, and I mm-hmm. do a lot of one-to-one, which brings me into having an accountability buddy. See, I do much better mm-hmm. with just a one-to-one person, and it doesn't always have to be the same person, but I have two or three people where they pretty much know 
what's happening to me on a daily basis. Now, one is my obviously is my husband, but I have a couple friends. In fact, you're one of them where, you know, there's mm -hmm. that continuity and that is how I thrive. So some people are going to really, really shine in groups and feel that community, but others are going to have to have what I call that accountability buddy. So seek out one person that you can kind of walk through this with. Now, another thing, and I want to talk a little bit about this because you really saved me this last month. And this is coming up with a protocol plan, like a food plan. If okay. it's, if it's, you know, food that you're working with an exercise plan, if you're trying to get into that mode, but also just a budget so that you're not doing the impulse yep. buying. But what I want to really acknowledge you for Nance was, you know, I, I remember the day that I got the call that my brother passed away, I sent you a text and I said, I need mm -hmm. to check in with you every morning and tell you what my food plan is because I don't want to eat my way through this. And I was going to be out of my element. I was going to be at my sister-in-law's place where people were bringing food from outside. And before I went there, I prepared my food and she's kind of used to that with me, but I knew that I wanted to stay as present as I could so that A, I could feel the feelings of the grief for my brother because that's a way that I was honoring him. I didn't want to just go into a food coma with it or, you know, I, I drink a little bit, but that's never a problem for me. It would have been eating mm -hmm. the, the foods that would have put me in a coma. But also, I didn't want to have the reactivity from eating sugar or flour because what I really notice is that when I eat those kinds of foods, I'm so much more vulnerable. And it's a biochemical response. And I think there's so many people out there that do not realize that their mood reactivity is connected to withdrawal from sugar or an allergic reaction to wheat or dairy or whatever it is. And so I wanted to eat really clean and absolutely texting you that you know, food plan. And sometimes it was just general. Like I just knew, okay, I don't know where we're going to eat, but I know that I'm just going to eat vegetables and, and protein tonight. Kept me accountable mm -hmm. to myself because I knew the next day I was going to be able to kind of vent it, you know, with you. So that was huge. And part of that was what I call staying mindful, staying centered. And that's the most important part of staying in a thriving mode is if you stay connected, then you're staying in the eye of the storm. If you get involved in Absolutely. all of the chaos, you know, you're in that tornadic energy. And that's when we impulsively buy and we overspend and we overeat. And we do all of this excessiveness that we pay the price for that in January. And we go into the remorse, you know, the buyer's remorse, you know, mm -hmm. and the, the well, and we all, then we also remorse. go into the resolutions. Yes. Which are, I mean, yes, yes. So yes everything's yes. big, big, yes. It, yeah, I don't even, we try I, to we'll, we'll talk, You'll talk more about that when it gets closer, I bet. Mm -hmm. Well, you, in fact, you and I are going to do the last show of the year talking about kind of the trap of New Year's resolutions and how you can make your intentions yeah. a little bit more harmonious way so you're not setting yourself up and um, learning to love yourself in your intentions instead of being the pusher driver that, boy, this year I'm going to go to the gym and do it. I'm, you know, it's like we, yeah. we roughhouse ourselves. And of course, within three weeks, our rebel comes to the surface and Correct. we go, go out. I don't even go to the gym the first three months of the year because it's just so irritating it's so crowded <laughs> right yeah. i want to live today on the 29th of november in a way that says i'm doing okay i want to live intentionally yes. and joyfully today rather than get to the first of the year and think i need a whole new nancy right, there's a way right. today to live in the vibration of joy of nancy that works today with these tools that we're talking about with journaling right. with having with my my peer support, with having you as a friend and a buddy to to check in with, with right. having that plan of how right. can I achieve that today, rather than thinking I need a complete and total overhaul exactly. with some calendar exactly. date. Exactly. I don't want to Where live we... as if I'm always waiting for an overhaul. Exactly. I want to live Where intentionally we... today. Where we could get to, I feel like a little puppy, you know, a Doberman puppy trying to jump <laughs> over you. I'm so excited. But I, we're yeah. almost more excited yeah. about the end of the, the conversation next year. But, yes. but yes. really mm -hmm. being able to celebrate 
who we were through this holiday season is what I is what I'm hoping for is really being mm-hmm. able to look back and say I stayed within my budget. You know, that's what I did when I came yeah. back from the two memorials. It's like I said to my husband, I am so glad I did that with Nance because that enabled me to be present in such a way that I feel really good about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so we're going to talk mm-hmm. about this more. Again, it's time for a short break. I'm Catherine Taylor, and you're listening to EFT for Spiritual Fitness, broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be right back to give you some experiences with coping and really learning to thrive instead of thrive, instead of strive through this area. Okay, we'll be right back. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back to EFT for Spiritual Fitness, broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Taylor. And if you're just tuning in, we have been talking uh, along with my friend and colleague, Nancy Cayley, the director and facilitator of Core Retreat, uh, which is a recovery food recovery program in YZ. And Nancy and I have been talking about the triggers and the tools that you can use to really stay conscious during this next five or six weeks as we go into 2019. And we're trying to inspire you to really be mindful so that on December 31st, when you're making your New Year's resolutions, it can be a resolve to continue what you've established, that you have been successful at striving through the holidays, that you stayed within the boundaries of your budgets, that you ate wisely, you if you partake in, in um, alcoholic beverages, that you did it in a mindful way, that you don't have any regrets, you don't have any places where you excessively used and now have embarrassments to deal with. So we're trying to really inspire you to do that. And what I want to start this segment out with is just a brief guided imagery that you can use if you archive this or you revisit it later to begin to see the contrast between the part of you that would engage in all of the chaos and really get into what I call the tornadic energy. And that's how I kind of relate to life. There's always a tornado going on outside of my force field. And if I get triggered with it, if I slide into it, then I'm impulsive, uh, things are random, I'm not making good choices. But if I'm doing my protocols that keep me spiritually fit, then I'm staying in the center of the storm and I can make good choices. So what I'm going to invite you to do, and certainly if you're driving or you're at a place where you cannot engage in this, Just listen to it. You can come back to it. You can archive these. In 48 hours, it'll be available as an archive. So you can come back to it and work with it more. But this will set a stage for it. But I want you to just think of being on this teeter-totter. And just take a moment. Slow everything down. We've given you a lot of information. We've given you a lot of, of ways to identify your triggers tools that you can begin to work with those. But for now, I'm just inviting you to put that to the side and come into a more relaxed state. What Richard Hansen calls that green zone of relaxation. You can take care of all the do's and the don'ts later, but just, I want you to just kind of breathe into the center of your being. And there's kind of this this illuminated adult self who is envisioning this teeter-totter. 
And on the teeter-totter, on one side is that aspect of you, probably a younger self, that can get caught in the tornado of, of energy, can be over-enthusiastic or loaded with, with guilt or regrets, and can begin to act out that stress with excessive behaviors. And slowly, that aspect of you begins to spin, begins to spin in that tornado. And when you're spinning, you're not connected to yourself. You can't make good choices. See who that part of you is. What's the essence of him or her? You may even identify a younger self that started doing that kind of tornadic spinning in response to a life event or a situation in your family and has spun out ever since. Just get a sense of that aspect of you. And you're observing this from that illuminated adult so that you are seeing it. You're not becoming that. You're just seeing that. And as you kind of hold that, just allow that to almost freeze so that you have the capacity to shift your vision now over to a more calm self. Maybe the illuminated part of you that does follow protocols, that does know how to work within your boundaries and your limits. And that part of you is sitting on the other side of that teeter-totter in a calm state, in a mindful state. Who is that person? What does he or she look like? And what's the energy that you feel with that part of you? And how can your third observing part really participate in the activities that allow you to set your protocols and then to be present for them? It takes time to set out a plan. And it doesn't have to be rigid. It can just be kind of a general umbrella of what your limitations are. What kind of foods do you want to eat during this period? What is your budget that will enable you to go into 2019 feeling good about how you manage that? What is your capacity for social obligation? And how can you turn those obligations into opportunities? Just get a sense of that. Feel that. Breathe that in. And we're going to do a little bit of tapping. And we may have to break this and go into our next segment. But Nance, will you um, echo me as I go through this tapping sequence? And we'll get as far as we can before we have to take a break. And then we'll finish it up. I will. Absolutely. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So for those of you who are in. We're going to start on the karate. For those of you who don't know anything about EFT, just listen to this and then go to my website, which is www.eftforyourinnerchild.com. Go to the tab that says Interactive Tapping Explained, and you'll learn everything you need to know, and you'll be able to come back and participate. But for right now, for those of you who know about tapping, Come to the karate, and we're just going to do what's called the setup phrases. And we're setting up that dichotomy, that teeter-totter of where you're at and where you want to go. So just repeat after me, Nance, while you're tapping on the karate. Even though this time of year... Even though this time of year... Has so many temptations and triggers. Has so many temptations and triggers. I choose to maximize my ability to stay present. I choose to maximize my ability to stay present. To use all I have learned. To use all I have learned. To move through these days with confidence, ease, and joy. To move through these days with confidence, ease, and joy. So even though there are a myriad of things... So even though there are a myriad of things that emerge for me at this time, 
that emerge for me at this time. I am willing to embrace this opportunity. I am willing to embrace this opportunity. I am willing to stay present. I am willing to stay present. With the discomfort. With the discomfort. With the confidence I can move through these feelings with ease. With with the confidence I can move through these feelings with ease. I can cope and attain and sustain a a state of peace. I can cope and attain and sustain a state of peace. Because I am willing to access the support system. Because I am willing to access the support system. That I have around me. That I have around me. So I do not have to do this alone. So I do not have to do this alone. So even though this time of year is often dreaded. So even though this time of year is often dreaded. And in the past, I have addicted or overdone as a way to numb myself to the pain. And in the past, I have addicted or overdone as a way to numb myself to the pain. I choose this year to stay present. I choose this year to stay present. Because I have the confidence that I can navigate through the discomfort. Because I have the confidence that I can navigate through the discomfort. The confidence I have or will establish. The confidence I have or will establish. And the support system I need so I am not alone. And the support system I need so I am not alone. Which enables me to trust this year I can operate differently. Which enables me to trust this year I can operate differently. I can stay in touch with my illuminated self. I can stay in touch with my illuminated self. And my support group. And my support group. I can, I can connect with my guardians. I can connect with my guardians. My angels and loved ones. My angels and loved ones. Who can walk through this time with me. Who can walk through this time with me. All right. Now, shake your hands out. And what mm-hmm. we did is we just set the stage for what we want to neutralize and what we want to reinforce. So we're going to do a round that starts to neutralize the negativity. Now, what I love about EFT is that we get to speak the unspeakable because you're tapping on certain endpoints and sending an electrical impulse to the glitch that's in your electrical circuitry that vibrates to the tension of what we're stating negatively. So it's one technique where you can speak the, the uh, you know, unsayable and untie the knot of that. So I start on the corner of the eyebrow. For those of you who have tapped, you start wherever you want. But every time Nancy, every time I say something and then Nancy repeats it, once we're done with that reminder phrase, then we move to the next point. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we start on the first point. All of this tension. All of this tension. These triggers. These triggers. Reminders. Reminders. Regrets. Regrets. Anticipation. Anticipation. Would love to have this be different. Would love to have this be different. But I have so much baggage that gets triggered. But I have so much baggage that gets triggered. I want to neutralize that baggage. I want to neutralize that baggage. But I'm not sure I know how. I'm not sure I know how. All of these triggers. All of these triggers. I want to neutralize these triggers. I want to neutralize these triggers. So I can move ahead with confidence and joy. So I, so I can move ahead with yeah. confidence and joy. All right. So we're going to stop that sequence right now because we have to take another break. Again, this is Catherine Taylor, your host for EFT for Spiritual Fitness. We're broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. But stay tuned because we'll finish that sequence when we come back. 
My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story, is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Welcome back to EFT for Spiritual Fitness. And again, we're broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Taylor. And in this broadcast, we have aimed to inspire you and to educate you regarding how you can thrive during this holiday season and how you can stand in your most illuminated self on December 31st with pride and a sense of celebration where you don't have a need for a do-over because you did exactly what you agreed to do with yourself. And I have had my guest on, my friend and colleague, Nancy Cayley, who's the director and facilitator of the CORE Retreat located in NYZ, Minnesota. And before our break, we did the first round of EFT tapping, where we began to neutralize the stress and the triggers. And we're going to complete that sequence now by by doing the the reminder phrases where we're just tapping on the endpoints and we have neutralized the challenge and now we're going to reinforce the ability to make good choices. So Nance, let's pick it up again by uh, tapping on the endpoints and we just, you and I at least, start on the corner of the eyebrow. Every time mm-hmm. Nancy and I complete that phrase, then we move to another point. And we may do a couple rounds with this. All right. You ready, Nance? I'm ready. All right. So this negativity. This negativity. I am so ready to transmute that. I am. I am so ready to transmute that. I am ready to come into this holiday season differently. I am ready to come into this holiday season differently. I have a lot of support to do so. I have a lot of support to do so. And if I haven't established the support. And if I haven't established the support. I still have the time to do so. I still have the time to do so. I can chart my unique plan. I can chart my unique plan. For what I need to stay focused. For what I need to stay focused. To stay mindful. To stay mindful. I can do it with a group. I can do it with a group. Or if I'm more of a loner, I can do it with a buddy. Or if I'm more of a loner, I can do it with a buddy. And I can stay connected to my guardians and higher self. And I can stay connected to my guardians and higher self. I don't have to do this alone. I don't have to do this alone. I really want to experiment. 
I really want to experiment. With what it's like to have a plan. With what it's like to have a plan. And to show up for that plan. And to show up for that plan. This year, it's going to be different. This year, it's going to be different. This, di- this year, I'm going to stay present. This year, I'm going to stay present. This year, the present I give to myself. This year, the present I give to myself. Is to be present. Is to be present. I'm going to thrive instead of strive. I'm going to thrive instead of strive. This year, it's going to be different. This year, it's going to be different. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if you ended up somewhere where you hadn't completed the sequence by coming to your last uh, endpoint, then I always just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you until I complete it. Mm -hmm. But that will Mm -hmm. give you kind of a way to begin to set the stage. So, Nance, before we run out of time, I really, really want to extend my thank you to, you know, participating in this. And I I so look forward to our our, um, episode at the end of December where we can really talk about the celebratory uh, effects of having walked through this in a mindful way. But I want you to talk a little bit about CORE because it's such a unique program, and I know you have a retreat coming up. So can you share that information before we run out of time? I can. Well, CORE Retreat is a food addiction, sugar addiction recovery program located in Wayzata. We do have a retreat coming up December 12th to the 16th. There's still room available if you want to participate just in time for the holidays, um, right in the middle of them. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful place to, to connect and to get started on a on a different way, a different relationship with food. Definitely for anyone mm-hmm. who struggles with excess food and the the, the issues that come with that. Mm-hmm. Well, and if you're sitting out there, you can access coremn.org. Sorry, oh, good. core, C O R M N.org is the website. Yep. Okay. And if you are sitting out there and you're struggling with food and you want to do something different and you don't have a support group, you don't have a structure, then giving yourself the present of going to a retreat right before the holidays, like you did, Nance, you went, I think your I date is November 14th and it was right before Thanksgiving and that will right give that to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't have to sit out there and suffer. If you're not local, if you're not in a position to take advantage of the core retreat, then find some group. Maybe it's not a recovery group. Maybe it's a grief group, or maybe it's a group that is just specific to your needs. Maybe it's a group at your church that just helps or go volunteer. Go find a place where you can be part of a group that's giving to other people that are in need. There's so many ways to be involved during this period. So um, I really encourage you to to discover what you need and then give yourself the present of really going through and and meeting that need, meeting that need of your inner child. Now, one of the things I'm going to do on, I think it's December 13th, is I'm going to have a whole broadcast of talking about how to meet your inner child's needs during the holidays, how to uh, change obligations into opportunities. So before I get into that, though, Nance, I just really want to thank you again for coming on and and sharing your wisdom and and participating in this with me. And well, you and I will be back that last Thursday of the year to pick up the celebratory aspect of the holidays. So I'll talk to you then. Thank you, Catherine. We'll see you then. Bye. All right. All right. Now, to wrap up this show, I just want to let you know what's coming up in December. Because on December 6th, I'm going to have my friend and colleague, D.K. Brainerd, who's going to come and share the astrological highlights of December. We're just going to be coming off of Mercury retrograde on the 6th. So that's going to be a pretty potent day. Again, on December 13th, I will do my broadcast on obligations and moving those into choices and opportunities. 
December 20th, I'm going to do a solstice celebration, lead you through a little bit of a ceremony. And December 27th, Nance will be back and we'll talk about how to move into 2019 in a celebratory way. What I want to invite you to do is certainly go to my website, www.eftforyourinnerchild.com, and you can find more information. If this is a particularly difficult time, I do offer a 15-minute free assessment, and I'm definitely offering that during the holidays. If you're stuck, call me, and we'll figure out some strategies that you can do. Maybe it will be working with me, but maybe it'll just be helping you devise a plan. So I want to make myself available for that. You can contact me directly by calling me at 612-710-7720. But until next time, this is Catherine Taylor, and I've been broadcasting live on BBM Radio and TuneIn Radio. And until next time, be good to you and to those you love. You've been listening to the mother of inner child work and host of EFT for Spiritual Tapping, Katherine Taylor. Join us each week and learn spiritual fitness and the art of relaxation for a more peaceful life. Allow joy, receive abundance, and attract healthy relationships on the next episode of Katherine Taylor's EFT for Spiritual Fitness. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.